Hello everyone, welcome to IT Tech Talk. I'm your host, Joel Ward, and today is a very special episode. We have hit the 50th episode, which I didn't think was going to be possible. I didn't think I would go this long, so I'm really excited to have my buddy Nick on the show to discuss podcasting and how to get started for the 50th episode. So thanks for joining, Nick. Absolutely, man. Congratulations on 50. That's awesome. Thanks, thanks. Uh, you'll get there soon, and, and and you can have. I don't know if, if you're going to do a 50th episode thing, but I think a 50 is a pretty big milestone because you know when I first started that first episode, I think we were just talking about in your show, uh, and and it's like we I started that first episode. It was just, it was horrible sound quality. It was um just back and forth. Like I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I was like all over the place. And now it's like a solid show where I have a following. I have uh, people who are starting to support the show, so it's been really it's really great to see where it's going. Um, so Nick, um, I know you and me have talked about it. And we've never really made an episode uh, about how to start a podcast, and I think in my content creation, I have dived into a little bit about how to start. There's like Anchor Podcast. There is different um, ways to get started. Uh, but what is the way? What got you started? How did you, let's go? Let's first ask how you got started. What you used in the space, mics, equipment, uh, the the app or or software you use. What was it? What you used to get started? So right, right when I decided that I wanted to do it, which was kind of like a, a random thing, I had always thought that I wanted to do a podcast like down the road and then decided I was going to do it. And I set myself a pretty tight deadline to like do a launch and kind of have everything figured out. So I had launched, I went from zero to launch in like 45 days, which I know when you launched yours, it was like freaking let's go day one, let's do it. But um, it started out with some, Pat Flynn resources. So anybody's not familiar, he is like, he broke 65 million downloads on his podcast. Like he's big in the podcast space. It's like top 10 in entrepreneurship podcast. And he's got a lot of podcast resources out there. So I had started there and basically just went with a lot of the recommendations that he had in a lot of his free guides and stuff like that. So right out of the gate, I ended up getting a mic. I got, I got the Samsung Q2U. Okay. which is, this is a big thing. Like a lot of people that want to start a podcast, they think, well, there's all this equipment and all this stuff to set up and it's going to be expensive and like all this. And really it doesn't have to be that, that Samsung Q2 use like $60 mic. Yeah. And it is top notch. Like the quality of it's insane. Like I know a lot of professional podcasters that use that mic over the 200, $300 mics that are out there. And it, it can be overwhelming, but knowing that there's cheap and, Cheap options that are high quality are great. Mm -hmm. And then I, I know you set up, you, you started using Anchor, yep. which is a free platform. I I don't have too many issues with Anchor, especially if you want to feel it out. I personally, that's where I was actually going to start. Mm -hmm. And I, I had recorded a little intro. I started recording an episode and then kind of panicked and backed out and didn't do it. And then as I was doing more research, I ended up going with Buzzsprout for the hosting and again, it's not that expensive. Anchor is obviously free, but Buzzsprout was only like 12 bucks a month. Okay. So that's, that's kind of where I started with it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just, you know, how you're saying using that mic. I have a $60 mic, which when we were discussing what mic I should get, you sent me something and it wasn't for me. I wanted something like a little more fancier, I think, I guess the word is. And, but the same amount, I paid this about the same amount, if not less for the mic I have, and it kind of looks like what a, a singer would use, and it, I like it. I love it. It's the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So people come to my office and studio, they're like, wow, that mic looks really high-end. How much do you pay for it? I'm like, 60 bucks. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> but, but you don't need a mic. If you have Anchor, if you, let's say you use Anchor. I don't know if Buzzsprout has an um, app, but if you use Anchor, you can just use your phone. You could record straight from your phone. Um, the intro, the music, anything you want is right there. Um, However, uh, when I got started, I didn't have like all the knowledge and stuff. And I've been picking it up, and now I have intro music. And I paid like I think it was seventy nine dollars for the intro music, and I use it and I edit it into my podcast all the time. Uh, I don't use it. The only thing I can't use it on is YouTube because I only paid for a podcasting license, not a um, podcasting and YouTube license. So I, I guess later down the road I can pay for some YouTube music. Um, but no, like it, it's so easy. And, you know, a lot of people, I think they're scary. I, I think that I just read, I think Wildcast posted the other day, is that we've hit 2 million podcasts. And that's insane. But like we were talking about the other day, yes, we've hit 2 million podcasts, but a lot of the mix of those podcasts have like four episodes and they've stopped. 
Whereas now I'm yeah. on my 50th episode and I continually want to pump out content. Even if I run out of guests and haven't gotten a guest in a while, I still want to pump out content. Even if that means I'm pumping out a live show or something, I'm going to put out content. And, and a lot of these people, I actually remember this one guy, he sent me a message and said, can you check out my podcast? And I was like, all right, dude, I'll check it out. I checked it out. And it was a really great episode. And he had another one come out, and I was like waiting and waiting and waiting. And I was like, is he going to pump out? So I messaged him, no response back. His page got deactivated and all that stuff. And I was like, all right, so I guess he's not doing podcasting anymore. So it's like when people pump out great content but then stop, like you know, yesterday we were talking about this, and I was just like, you know, it's true because out of the two million podcasters, you know, I have these great podcasts I used to listen to. And now some of them don't even do they, – they were on their 200th episode, and they've stopped. And like 200 episodes – I couldn't even imagine 200 episodes. I'm just worried about 50 right now. <laughs> but 200 episodes, and then you stop, but you have such great content, and everybody's supporting you on Patreon and stuff and, and keeping you going. But you can't pump out content anymore. I mean – if you're getting supported, you might want to give somebody something. I mean, don't just stop. I mean, if you stop, then people are going to lose interest. And then when they when you do start putting out content again and it doesn't show up, you're going to have no listeners. And that's just my opinion. But as far as podcasting goes, it's easy to get into. I think it's a great way to get yourself heard. Uh, if you have an idea like crime or mystery or, or entrepreneurship or money or real estate, I mean, if you have an idea, use that platform. Use Use podcasting to get your platform out there or your your voice out there, and I'm sure you can agree with this. It's like it's so easy for you to get your voice heard now. Now, Nick, um, I'm gonna ask you a, a couple questions, but um, as far as it goes, uh, podcasting for you, do you feel like your brand has has grown since you started? Like, you feel like you've actually reached a, a what you want, like your goals you set as far as starting the podcast? I mean, I still. As far as the goals that I have, I still have a lot of goals that I want to reach. Like I haven't reached kind of the the pinnacle of the the goals that I want to hit as far as like downloads, subscribers, that type of stuff. But the podcasting was something that, like I said, something I figured I had to like wait. I had to have the audience up front. I had to do all that. And when I finally just said, you know what, let's just do it, see what happens. If no one listens, no one listens, but I'm not going to just put it off any longer. And after doing that, I wish I would have started sooner because, yes, the podcast has brought people to my brand that I couldn't do without the podcast. Mm -hmm. Being able to bring guests on my show every week, I mean, that's what's so awesome about, about podcasting is, like, if I was a blogger and I reach out to other people for guest posts or to get featured on their blog, you're probably not going to get a lot of response yeah. unless you've built up, like, a long-standing relationship with them and they like your writing and do all that with podcasting, you automatically have a platform that's valuable to other people. You have a place where people can bring their voice on your show. Mm -hmm. So not only do you have something to offer people that you want to, maybe you just want to have a conversation. Yep. Pat Flynn was a big guest that I knew when I started the podcast, like he was one that I wanted to get on the show and I finally did. And if I didn't have a podcast that wouldn't have happened. Yep. And not only does it give you a platform to serve other people and bring other people, chat with other people, like share their knowledge with your audience, but it also builds your credibility. So by me bringing guests on the show that know what they're talking about, I might not have a clue what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm by no means an expert, but that's why I bring experts on. And just by association, my credibility goes up, my expertise goes up, and I'm learning along the way. So just being able to have those relationships and build those connections with people is such a huge advantage as a podcaster that you can't get with really any other platform, even video. Yeah, and and you know I've actually really enjoyed the guest part of it. Like when seeing you got guests, I was like, man, I need to get some guests. Like I need to, I need to start with guests. And I actually you had Pat Flynn on it, and I was so happy to see you got that because I know that you've been wishing that for a while. And like Dr. Eric Cole came on my show. The guy works for Bill Gates. He's worked for presidents. I mean, the guy's a high priority guy. Like, he has like tons of scheduling. He's a keynote speaker. And he came on my show and told me, he was like, after the show, he was like, I enjoyed going on your show. It wasn't scripted. It wasn't, you know, he was actually enjoyed being on the show. And um, it, was, it was one of the things is like, it makes me feel good that someone 
who is in a different space than I am, you know, enjoyed my conversation, enjoyed my, enjoyed my, uh, interview. And, and, and these interviews that you and me have lined up, like we may be on a different spectrum as far as interviews. Cause you're interviewing entrepreneurship and leaving nine to five. I'm interviewing people to get knowledge and, and gain some kind of like understanding of a product or a service or even an, uh, uh, an idea. And, and, and just to hear someone's testimony about how they got started and, and you know, those interviews have value to them. And, and one of the things that I think your, uh, some of your interviewees have said, and, and even one of mine has said, it doesn't matter who you get on your show. If you have someone who can bring something to the table and they don't have to be Bill Gates or, or Pat Flynn, they can just be regular Joe Schmo and, and you can get some great value out of that. Um, you had some guests on your show, which I was literally have listened to, and, and I was like, these guests are great because I can I can relate to them. And then you had the bigger guests like Pat Flynn, and I've listened to him talk, and I'm like, this dude is awesome, but I can't relate to him in, in a way. But he still got some information which I still can use as far as my personal life. He may not be able to relate to us smaller people, but he definitely has some information that I've been able to relate to as far as like – the um, way he talks and how he carries himself, I'm like, oh, you know, I can learn something from how this guy is so like encouraging and he is confident and stuff. So yeah, I, I think you brought some fantastic guests on. I try and bring. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I tried to bring some guests on, like you know, that I know has will bring some good stuff for my show. And and I always constantly like bringing you on because there's like there's two people who I like bringing on. And for those who listen, Nick's one of them, and my buddy Justin Simpson, who is a great SpaceX uh, like knowledge guy. <laughs> I always bring him on as much as I can. And actually, I think if I remember correctly, I haven't looked at my schedule lately, but he's coming on here soon, hopefully. Um, but. No, I, I enjoy having guests, and the one thing, and I will tell you this, and I'm sure you can agree with me, the one thing about having guests is it's a conversation, and, and you feel more comfortable having a conversation with someone over just talking to yourself and like ranting about something, and I've actually gotten that experience where I'm like, yes, I like actually just talking to the mic and, and giving my opinion on something, but when I can bring someone on to bring more value to my show, that's even better, and, and going back to content creation... It is easy to do this, and, and and one of the things you said is like if you were creating a blog or something like along a website, and you're like, I want you to put your your name or your your stuff on my website. You're probably not gonna get responses, but if you say, Hey, I got this show, and I'm looking for guests, and I would like you to go on as a guest to talk about a product, a service, or your entrepreneurship, your financial state, like anything you know along those lines. Someone's gonna be like, Oh my goodness, someone wants me to go on their show. And one of the things I've realized, even though I don't have the numbers like some people do, like Pat Flynn, like he has some crazy download numbers and all that stuff. Even though I don't have some like what you had on, like, you know, someone like that, like I don't have the numbers. People are still receptive to my asking about going on my show. And some of these people are some big people. And I'm just like, but they normally, if I had met them in public, they probably wouldn't have given me the time of day. But here I have this show, and now they're like, oh, my goodness, I'd love to come on your show. I'd love to talk to you. And then afterwards, have a conversation with you, maybe for a few more minutes. And that's what I try and do is I try and after the show have a few more minutes and just to talk with them and get to know them a little bit better. And then thank them for their time and, you know, like I would a friend. And, and that's one of the things that I think has grown my podcast is, like, I try and make it not scripted. It's not set in stone of what's going on it's it's constantly changing uh to to the who's on my show and who's you know viewing it uh and i think that's one of the things that has made it a successful uh, show and that's one of the things that i tell you all the time i was like dude if i if you hadn't kicked my butt in the gear and like hey you need to do this i wouldn't have gotten started and, and for those who don't know nick and me actually met on twitter um over his podcast uh i i saw a couple of his tweets and stuff and actually you know it's funny i don't think i've ever told you this i saw your tweets out of random like, I wasn't looking for you purposely. I saw your tweets at random. I was like, this guy's really cool. So I started following your stuff. I started listening to your show. I started getting involved. <laughs> and I was like, I need to get in touch with this guy. And Nick actually reached out to me when I re reached out to him, and we got connected. And, and since then, we have bonded over that and had some great talks and some great times on the show. And, and he's got me on his show, and hopefully I, I, I will we'll talk about that more in a minute. But we've had, you know, it's one of the things that we talked about on his show yesterday was if you don't reach out to people, if you don't talk to people, if you don't take the chance and you don't get that, like you said, that no, 
<laughs> if you don't get that no, <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to – so, yeah. So, Nick, Nick, your show, the 9 to 5 podcast, is – is I've actually just shared it with someone today, by the way. Um, so they oh, nice. Thank they, you. They were like, <laughs> what, what, what kind of show are you talking about? So I shared it with – I shared my show and your show. So um, – but – your show, the nine to five, is about leaving the nine to five job, but you know I feel like your show is much more than that. I feel like your show has more depth than just leaving the five, nine to five. I feel like there's some more. Uh, how should I put this? There is like knowledge in what you're talking about on your show. It's not just about what I did to leave my job or I got laid off so I started this. It there is so much more knowledge and power. Your show. I mean, your show has has given me some some information that. Normally, I would never go looking for and stuff. So, your show. Let's let's. I'm gonna ask this question. I don't know how I'm gonna ask it. I'm trying to ask it. Um, your show, where it's going. Do you see it going as still an entrepreneurship space, or do you want to take it like farther than that? Do you? Because I know you talked about rebranding. Uh, what what do you what are you gonna do? What's 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 gonna happen in the future for your show? Is it gonna continue staying the nine to five, or or what do you what are your plans for your show? Yeah. So I mean. I guess just to kind of back up a little bit and the whole reason that I had started the show in the first place. So I am currently in a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. So I'm not coming from a position to say I left the nine to five job, listen yeah. to my show and I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to bring on the people who have done it so I can learn. So the guests can learn. So everyone can kind of see the different options that are out there. Because when I graduated college and I started in my career path, which I'm a project manager right now, I, my mindset was that I had to get good grades in college, get a career, and I'm going to ride that career out the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And after I realized that that didn't have to be the only option, I figured there's got to be other people that are in that same boat. They're like, 9-5 isn't the only option for me. I don't have to be in this if I don't want to. Mm -hmm. So really the whole idea of the show is to kind of bring awareness to that and show what other people have done to make that transition out of 9-5 into entrepreneurship and basically the steps and strategies that they use to get themselves there. And if that can one motivate people to get going, follow their passions mm -hmm. or to help them strategically figure out a way to get there, I want to be that outlet and I want to be that avenue and resource that they can use to get there. And I'm, I'm bringing them along on my journey as well as I'm progressing. I'm bringing on guests that not only I think would be beneficial for my audience, but are going to be beneficial for me because I'm going through the same stuff that my guests are. So I think, even with, if I were to rebrand, which I'm still not, there's a lot of stuff that I got going on right now to, before I start worrying about that. If I do end up rebranding, I think the main premise of the show is going to be the same. Okay. I still want to take people on that journey because I think a lot of times we get too caught up in the end goal. So if I break free from the nine to five, that's not going to be the end of the nine to five podcast. There's still more story to tell. There's still a journey yep that is happening. And I want to be able to take people along on that journey. We oftentimes you just get caught up in that. Yeah. That, that end goal. Mm -hmm. If I leave the nine to five, that's it. We did it. Game over. Like that's not it. I'm, I'm more encouraged and I'm inspired by the journeys and I want to kind of keep bringing people on and sharing that story. Yeah. So Nick, and this is a, I'm going to go through a couple of questions again. Um, so first off, what would you tell listeners uh, who are like, Hey, this podcast is great. Like, I would like to get my own podcast started. What are some tips, some pro tips, because you, you're more pro than me. You've been doing this longer than me. Um, what are some pro tips you can give about how to start a podcast, what you can do to get started, where to go to get started, uh, some of the things you recommend they do in the process? Uh, so would you like to go into that? Yeah. So I guess if, if getting a podcast started is something that you're interested in, I say for one, don't think about it too much. Don't psych yourself out. That's exactly what I did. And just kind of dive into it. Dive headfirst into it. There's a lot of resources out there. Like I said, Pat Flynn has a ton of resources. I've started creating a bunch of resources for people who want to learn how to start a podcast. I can't remember the URL off the top of my head, so I'll have to, I'll have to get that for you. And if you okay. do like an intro or something to that, we can share that in there. But... It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would say is know what your goal is with the podcast. Because a lot of people say, I want to start a podcast, but they don't know. They just see somebody, like they watch Joe Rogan do it, and they're like, oh, that's so cool. Like, I want to do that. It's like, 
you have to start with a little bit of direction. And I would say if your main goal is to monetize, monetization can be part of that goal, mm -hmm. but that should not be your total goal. People don't start a podcast and then the next day quit their job because their podcast just exploded. Like it just right. doesn't happen. So there has to be a bigger goal, whether that's to use it as a platform to build an audience, market your business, whatever you want that goal to be, just make sure it's solid. And then when it comes to like finding a lot of people I hear, well, I don't know what to podcast about. Well, think about things that you have interest in. What are your passions? What are you good at? What can you share with an audience that you and I might take for granted? Like, I just think of, okay, if we just go start with our IT. So you're big into IT. Yeah. A lot of stuff and knowledge that you have, there's a lot of people out there that don't have that knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it might be something that seems super simple to you. And it's like, it just clicks and everything makes sense. Well, there's a lot of people on the other end of that, that it doesn't make sense and it doesn't click. And you have that knowledge that other people want. So what is that knowledge that you can share with other people? And it's something, I think it was actually in the interview with Pat Flynn that I did. He said, it's very difficult to kind of remember what it was like before you knew something. So if you're an expert in your field, think about your audience that doesn't know anything. How are you going to translate that message to them? Because you're, you're at a completely different level than they're at. So you need to kind of bring it back so that you can kind of relate to them on their level and simplify it and make it, I don't know, try to take it back to when you were learning it. Um, and then in, in terms of like the software and equipment and all of that, I mean, like I said, there's so many resources out there. It doesn't have to be complicated. Anchor does make it super simple. You can do everything from the app. You can record your intros, do your cover art. If you want intro music, you can have that in there. You can record the podcast in there. Like mm -hmm. it all can happen from within that app. And then it gets published and distributed out to all the, the different apps like Apple and Google and Spotify and everything like automatically. So the, the tech side of it, I don't think is necessarily a big hurdle. And a lot of people think that it is a massive undertaking, but I will say if, if you are serious about doing a podcast and we talked about the consistency and getting past that threshold, a lot of podcasters don't make it past episode 10. And it's, it's a really odd number that like, it doesn't seem like that many, but there is, it's easy to get started, but it's difficult to maintain. Mm. That's how I would put it. Like you have to be willing to put in the work. It's going to take work, but as you develop it, I mean, the first, at least the first 10 episodes, I was still trying to figure it out. It would take me when I was editing the podcast, like I, I spent a lot of time editing them and hell at the beginning, it would take me like eight hours to edit a podcast episode to get it right. And it was a grind and I was doing a weekly episode or weekly podcast to try to figure it out. And now that I do have it figured out and I do kind of have a system behind it, it only takes me about an hour, hour and a half tops to edit an entire 60 minute episode. And I probably could do it quicker if I wanted to, but I, I'm very... I guess, particular about certain things, yeah. but I mean, it can really take as long or as little as you want, but you have to get the reps in and you have to be willing to work for it and then start systemizing it. Yeah. And I think when we first, when we first started, I actually, um, when you got me started, I think the first episode I didn't even edit, I just popped it online and we were talking about this yesterday and I was like, <laughs> I heard that first episode and I'm just like so embarrassed how my voice sounded, how it was like the episode was in and I'm just like, there's no intro music. It's just, it's just, yeah, it, it makes me cringe. And I'm just like, should I take it down? But then it's like, that's how far I've come. If you, if you listen to that episode and then you listen to my, my new episodes and you're like, wow, this guy has gone far. And I'm sure if I listened, I haven't gone back to your archives from way, way back when, but if I'm sure if I went back to the episode, I'm like, like Nick, come on. Good. like your episodes <laughs> like now are like boss man. Like, but like, honestly, I'm oh, sorry. I, no, I was just going to say to get back to the, the point of like, just start regardless. If you don't have the editing and the tech and all that stuff figured out, just start releasing episodes because one of the, I think it's the second most downloaded episode of my show. If you go back and listen to it, I have to figure out the exact number. I think it was 10. That audio sounded terrible. It was so bad. I thought my microphone, I thought it was picking up my microphone and it was recording everything through my computer microphone. It wasn't yeah. recording it through my studio mic. So my voice sounded awful. His sounded decent, but my audio sounded terrible and it's still the second highest downloaded episode that I have to date. Oh, so 
quality, yes, it can matter, but don't let it be the make or break situation of your podcast. If all you can do right now is record it through your phone and hit publish, record it through your phone and hit publish. Mm -hmm. Get used to it. Then you can start incorporating, okay, I want it to sound a little bit better. What can I do to make it sound a little bit better? And just progress because, like you said, your episode sounded like, uh, my episode yeah. I know sounded like garbage. So it, it's come a long way, but it took me going through those struggles and wanting to figure it out and wanting to make it a good show that I was able to slowly start figuring out to where I'm consistent with it now. Yes. Yes. And, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's like I I look back and I'm just like, wow, why didn't I just why didn't I just go and buy that mic? Why didn't I just do this? Why didn't you can't look at it like that? Like if you hear these episodes, and you're like you get farther ahead and you're like, wow, why didn't I just do it? Well, you at least got your foot in the door. You at least started. Mm -hmm. You at least tried if you. But that's the thing. And I think we talked about this yesterday as well in your podcast. If you don't try, if you don't try. You're not going to go far. You're you're going to be stuck in the same thing. If you like leaving the nine to five, for example, if you if you you know stay in the same job and you're like miserable in it and you don't you don't try and do something to change it, that's on you. It's not on anybody else. You know. So if you're like, hey, I want to start a podcast, why don't you just get your phone out, download Anchor, or find a, an app that works and log in and do it. Just do it. And so I, I, that's why I recommend anybody is, is just going ahead and doing it, uh, and try. And then later, when they're when you're when you got a little bit farther ahead, see see ask yourself, well, hey, maybe I, what can I do to improve it now that I've gotten this listening base? And one of the things I realized is I didn't think I would have such a listening base. I actually had like ten listeners, and and now I have I think it's like thirty dedicated listeners every day, and it's like really great. So it's like having those 30 listeners, I mean, yeah, it's 30 listeners, but out of my 400 listeners, maybe this 30 just listen to me regularly, but that's still a good number, and that fluctuates every day. It could be 30 one day, and maybe I'll go back one another day, and it's like 100. So, you know, having those dedicated listeners, you know, that's one of the things we, t I think Pat Flynn talked about in your episode, was it, um, you could have 10 users, but as long as you're taking care of those 10 users, you're doing you're doing them a good service because you're giving them content. You're giving them something to listen to. You're giving them uh, something that they can feel good about, when, and they're not like, wow, this guy's not that great. So, you know, maybe, and this is just my take on it, your episode may not have been that great because of the sound quality, but guess what? Somebody's listening to it because it had some great, like, something they could take out of it, something I, – I haven't listened to that episode, so maybe I should go back and listen to it, give you another listen. But um, <laughs> but some, like the episode, whatever it was, it was about, gave them something that they were like, oh, this is knowledge. And, and, and one of the things I say, knowledge is power. And having that knowledge, you know, the fact that you were able to give them something, that's why they kept coming back to the episode. So I think that's why it's the most listened to episode. Now – my Amazon episode, that um, Amazon's Rise to the Top episode, <laughs> which was recorded, I'm pretty sure, from my phone. Or no, I think it was my webcam or my phone. Anyway, that episode has hit some pretty high numbers. It's, I think it's at like like 80 listens now or something like that on my like oh. Spotify. And <laughs> let me tell you what, it sounds horrible. But then I was, that's why I was like, when I, t I literally had, I was like, Nick, we need to re I need to record an episode of Amazon again, and I want you to do it with me. But even still, the, someone's listening to that. Someone was like, oh my goodness, I didn't know that about Amazon. I didn't, there's something in that episode I didn't know. And people are listening to that. So even though the, the sound quality is not good, even though you only are using your phone, don't get scared. Don't like, and, the, and I told, I was telling Nick this the other day. I was scared because I didn't like how my voice sounded. I was worried it was going to look and sound awful, and that's what kept me from doing it. But I jumped in and did it, and even though my voice didn't sound great, I still kept doing it. And guess what? I have listeners. I have a, a, a fan base. Uh, I, I have a show that's great, and it's on its 50th episode. I mean, what more could you ask for? So, um, I mean, I just to kind of riff off of that, what you're saying, like thinking that you're, you don't like the sound of your voice, all of that. We are our biggest critics on everything we do. We are going to overanalyze everything that we create, everything we produce, every vocal pitch inconsistency that we have. And I, I always heard that, but then there was something that happened to me that made me realize, like, oh, shoot, like, I'm way overthinking all of this. Yeah. Because I, I was doing a video, and I sent the video to someone. I was like, hey, take a look at this. Like, it was the first video since starting the podcast that I did because videos always terrified me. 
and I sent it to him. Like I was pretty happy with most of it, but there were certain parts that I was like, eh. I sent it to him and said, okay, what do you think? And they're like, I think it's awesome. Like publish it. And I was like, but what about this part? Like this part was driving me nuts. And they're like, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Like I didn't even know that that was like, it's fine. Just publish it. And I was like, whoa, like something I thought was like going to shut down that video and people weren't going to watch it or turn it off at that point because of the stupid little, I don't even remember what it was, but it just made me realize like, yeah, I way overthink this thing. I just need to create the content, put the information out there and just hit publish. Yep. Yep. Well, Nick, we are at our 30 minute mark and you know what, everybody, I, I want to keep going like, and I would love to keep going. But I try and keep my shows down to a minimum uh, to keep, you know, audiences coming back because I don't want to drag it on. Uh, so, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in for the 50th episode. Nick, thank you for joining me. It's always a pleasure. Yes, man. Thank you for having me. It's, it's always a blast coming up. Awesome. Awesome. Well, everybody, tune in in the next couple of days. There's some great guests coming on. So I hope to see you in the next one.